data science. It's probably not the first time you've heard about that or you wouldn't be here watching this video. Data science is an increasingly popular field that often ends up in the news alongside with other buzzwords like machine learning and definitely artificial intelligence. However, data science is also something that affects you and that you interact with in your daily life. And I don't mean you, the portion of the viewers who want to become data scientists and watch my tutorials. I mean all of you. If you've used maps to get anywhere today, if you've gone shopping and used the loyalty card, if you've opened pretty much any app on your phone, if you watched Netflix, ordered something from Amazon, or listened to a song on Spotify, anytime you've been recommended to watch, buy, or listen to something else, that's the result of data science and machine learning algorithms. Even right now, the YouTube algorithm is probably already recommending you what to watch next after you're finished watching my video. All of this is data science and it affects the way that you interact with the internet and sometimes the real world as well. A lot of companies are using data to understand your behavior and understand what you might do next and then influence that to give you a very personalized experience of the internet. So even if you like it or not, or if you understand it or not, chances are you're part of a bunch of data science experiments every day. So if you understandably want to learn a little bit more about it, either because you want a career in data science or because you want to know how it works and how it affects you, this series of video is going to address some fundamental concepts of data science and machine learning. Let's get into it. To start off with, we will talk a lot about data how should you look at it from a data science perspective, what kind of data there is, what can you do with it, and how it fits within the data science and machine learning life cycle. And then later on, we'll talk about some basic machine learning models, categories of models, and how to pick between them. Let's get started with our first episode. Now, data is a fundamental part of data science. I mean, it's in the name. It's something that is very important and without which you can't do any fancy models, you can't predict anything, you can't create AI unless it has a foundation of data. But we say this word data a lot, it's thrown around in movies like the data is wrong or the data is lying or whichever variation of that you've seen. But what do they talk about when they say that, you know, data and what kind of data is there? Is there good data and bad data and better data? And will I ever stop saying the word data? or data, depending where you're from. Let's take a look at it. Let's start with where it comes from, data sources. Like I mentioned in my introduction, let's look at the example of a few applications they've probably interacted with. If we take Netflix, data can be both the movie entries that Netflix has, you know, an actual movie in an entirety, all the frames and the soundtrack, that is data, but also the history of what movies you've watched, that's historical data, maybe your profile, the things that you liked, how long you watched a video for, what kind of actors do you usually tend for, what are the searches that you've done on Netflix, what do you click on based on the thumbnails that are shown to you. All of that is data and it can be used to create models. But let's stick with the data for now. Let's try to make some categories out of it. Of course, not all data is created equal. Some data is useful and some data is useless. You may have heard the phrase data is the new oil or all these big statements made about how important it is to store a lot of data and do things with it. However, no volume is not always as important as the actual quality of the data you're working with. For example, the actors that are in a movie or the genre of that movie, if it's drama or comedy, that's insightful data that can become information and can be used to do something. However, the percentage of blue that happens to be in a frame at a point in time, maybe not the most important data to have. Then we have other categories of data, for example, structured and unstructured. Structured data is something that data scientists work with a lot, and it's maybe what you would think of as well when you think data. Excel sheets, tables, databases, things that have columns and rows and names for those columns and features, that is structured data and it's very useful and is used in a lot of variety of applications. With our Netflix example, say we have our catalog of movies. You know, you have your titles, you have your genre, you have the year that they came out in, all of those lines of data, each representing one movie or an entry in our database. That's structured. Unstructured would be the movie itself. How do you store a movie in a table? You can write a description of it. You can store the images of every frame in that movie. 
that will be unstructured data, right? A picture. It doesn't have a table. It doesn't have columns. It just has pixels. And there's things that you can say about that image, but it's also kind of subjective what the people would say. So we'll just put it under unstructured data. Then we have what is called clean data and raw data. Raw data is just straight from the source as unprocessed as you can have it, bunch of information and data points. There can be a lot of things in there that you don't need, even if that data is useful. Then there's clean and raw data. Raw data is the data that just comes straight from the source as unprocessed as you can get it and may have a lot of mistakes in it, may still have some unimportant information, may have some repetition, may have you know things that aren't really gonna help us to use that data and we need to clean it before we can take it to the next step. In our example before of a table of movie information, for example, things that aren't clean could be maybe we don't know what year a movie was from, maybe the year isn't there but it's very obviously wrong, maybe there's multiple entries of the same movie with conflicting information. Those would need to be taken out to create clean data. The most beautiful, most pure, most ready to be used for something else, data. Then we have different other layers when it comes to looking at data. Things like ethics. Is it ethical that we have all this data? If it comes to a table of movies, that's public information and it's probably fine. If it comes to your personal preferences about the movies you watch or the time of the day you watch that movie at, or your favorite scenes that you keep replaying over and over and over, that can become more sensitive. You know, it's something that says something about you and maybe you're the only person who wants to own that data. You don't want it broadcast on the internet. Imagine opening Netflix and it says, Emily watched this movie 235 times today. Go, Emily. That's not something that would be shared publicly. So there's different types of data that has different levels of access to it, different levels of privacy, and can or cannot be shared with others. And of course, there's a bunch of other categories, but I won't bore you with those today you get a basic idea of the way that we can look at data. Tables, structured images and videos, unstructured, blurry stuff with missing values, raw, processed, beautiful, clean, categorized tables or pictures, clean, useful, we like those. A Wikipedia entry, public data. Your journal entry, probably private and weird if someone has that other than you. Now, if we look back at the data science perspective on things, where does all this data stuff fall in? To end this section off, I'm gonna give something like a checklist where it comes to data that you need to look into and explore before you move to the next phase of a data science process. What kind of data do you have? You can have an overview of the categories I've mentioned. Where does the data come from? Do you have access to it? Is it public? Is it sensitive? Etc. 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 Then you would think, is the data relevant to what you're trying to solve? You can have really useful and interesting data, but it has to answer the specific question that you're going to ask of it. So the data I've mentioned, that can be used to recommend someone a movie. It can be used to solve global climate. And that's all we had time for today for this first episode of Data Science Fundamentals. Hope that was useful for you. Look out for the next episodes coming out on this channel. And if there's anything in particular you'd like me to address, just put it in the comments and I'll get to it. Thanks for watching, have a great day.